It almost feels tired to say Adobe Illustrator has long been the industry standard for vector graphic design. But with recent news of the online design platform Canva acquiring Affinity, I think Adobe has got some serious competition. Nearly 30 years old now, it's worth reviewing how Adobe Illustrator holds up to its best competitor, Affinity Designer, in 2024. Hi, my name is Vivian and I'm a graphic designer based in Berlin. Today, I'll be designing a book cover using both Adobe Illustrator and Affinity Designer to compare their strengths and capabilities when paired with the Wacom 1M tablet. I first started off with some paper sketches, then I'll put one into each different program and using the same tools in each, walk you through my design process of turning paper sketches into vector graphics. Let's get started. The book cover I'm designing is inspired by my friends in Vietnam who published the first collection of Vietnamese queer and sexuality slang with English definitions and many wonderful illustrations. For my sketches, I was inspired by children's dictionary picture books and included some cute objects, shapes, and some abstract paint blobs on top of a grid to convey the idea of breaking out the mold. Right now, I use a tablet like this as compared to an iPad or one of Wacom's other tablets with a display because I already do all my other work on my laptop, so it's so much easier to keep all my files in one place. I'll be using a combination of mouse work and a tablet to draw vector graphics. So I'm first starting off with Adobe Illustrator. At the brainstorming stage, honestly, I'm a paper and pencil kind of girl, so I already took a picture of my sketch and then I just dropped it very easily into the program. Then I used my basic shape tools to lay out my grid and then connected my Wacom 1M tablet with Bluetooth. And it honestly worked right out of the box. I didn't have to mess with any settings and it was so easy to just select the basic brush tool to start drawing all of the simple vector paths tracing over my sketch. I mainly do minimalistic abstract designs and don't use all of Illustrator's tools very often, but you can create way more complex shapes and illustrations with tools like Shape Builder and Blob Brush. Illustrator also has way more features that are text-based though, so if you work heavily with typography and need to edit not just the font, but also mess with kerning and distortions, then this would be the match point. Here, I decided to just use the Google font called Be Vietnam, since it's pretty cute and one of the few typefaces with dedicated Vietnamese letter forms and adaptive diacritics, which are the accent marks above or below the letters, and is engineered for their re readability. Illustrator is also integrated with Adobe Fonts, which is just a massive library of some of the best fonts out there, and you can test them out on your project first in Illustrator before you decide to buy it. Working with stroke and fill gradients is as easy as clicking and dragging over the object to create the direction of gradient how I want. Now I'm just going to use the preset swatches here and go for a maximal color pop. One thing that's crucial to my workflow is called image tracing, and that's exclusive to Adobe Illustrator. I'm not using it right now, but I would say 80% of the time when I open Illustrator for work, it's because I'm using image tracing to turn bitmap or pixel-based images into vector paths, especially when I receive designs like stickers or illustrations from other people that weren't made with vector graphic software, and then I have to get them ready for print. Now, I'm on a 2020 MacBook Pro and Illustrator speed is pretty solid. I also usually have to mess around with settings each software update because it can get laggy dealing with complex files. The new 2020 era updates attempted to make the entire program more beginner and user friendly with a lot of tutorials. I think in the past year or two, there's now a new AI pop-up bar that suggests contextual tools that adapt based on the selected object or tool. But to be honest, it just always kinds of gets in my way. I mean, I would move it all the time and then and honestly do to reorganize my workspace, but I also just want Illustrator to work right out of the box without me having to always mess with the settings. However, the synergy between InDesign, Photoshop, and Illustrator is crucial for me, and working in the Adobe ecosystem and being able to export in .ai files is crucial, as that's the industry standard and few companies ask for otherwise. Here's the finished design I made with Adobe Illustrator. Now to Affinity Designer. Right off the bat, I already appreciate the streamlined UI and the fact that it's buttery smooth. It's got all the main tools I like to use like pen and brush and because it just feels lighter. 
I can actually see myself using the pencil tool to sketch if I wanted to do something quick while staying on my computer. You can see here that I'm cleaning up my vector pads by using the node tool to edit my anchors and zooming in and out of the workspace just feels so seamless. My Wacom tablet also works right out the box, just connected to Bluetooth and without having to mess with any settings, but drawing just feels so much smoother. My entire workflow feels a lot easier and I'm not constantly rearranging so many open menus. Now let's delete these strokes and fill it with gradients. I'm putting the illustrator window on the left so I can see what the gradients look like. The gradient tool is pretty much the same as Illustrator's, although I think Illustrator had nicer default color swatches. All the options up here are easy to understand if you hover over them, and you could even add noise to the gradient colors. Of course, you can pretty much do anything in Illustrator that you can do in Affinity, and more, but here the workflow and the navigation feels so modern and so intuitive. For example, Affinity uses sliders to control sizing and zooms, whereas Illustrator relies on its mainstay of drop-down, numerical boxes. But for me, Affinity Designer sliders are a more intuitive way to determine sizing, whether you're determining the appropriate stroke width or layer transparency. And if you haven't used a vector graphics program before, or you're migrating from Illustrator like me, then tools are more or less in the same place. Except Affinity feels like a product designer removed every tool that I don't use and kept everything I do use, then displayed it all more clearly and made everything faster. Now, Affinity doesn't have a dedicated image tracing tool, and the file extension it uses is .af design. So to collaborate, you would either share it with someone who uses Affinity, or you can export it to another format like PNG, JPG, SVG, PDF. I also think the .psd Photoshop file works too. But the risk in exporting to other formats is always that elements may be lost in translation so that exported.ai files from Affinity may arrive at the printer with missing or altered layers, making proofs even more important than normal. But it does import any Adobe extension file, so while it may not have the same level of integration and industry ubiquity as Illustrator does within the Adobe ecosystem, there are easy workarounds. Here's the finished design I made with Affinity Designer. And here are the final versions side by side I put in a book mockup. As you can see, the design process for Adobe Illustrator and Free Designer are both pretty much the same. Although Illustrator may have an edge in certain features, I actually just enjoy using Affinity Designer so much more when it boils down to actually drawing with it. It's just so much more streamlined compared to Illustrator, which is really hardcore and only a small percentage of people actually use all the features. On the other hand, Affinity Designer is faster, cleaner, easier to use, and cheaper. I actually got a free 3-month trial of Affinity with my Wacom One M tablet, and you could buy the program once for only $50 and own it forever. With how quality the product is, I'm pretty confident that they'll continue to update the program with really quality features. Now, will Affinity Designer actually replace Adobe Illustrator? Probably not. But there's really nothing you can't do in Illustrator that you can't work around in Affinity. And with Canva's recent acquisition of Affinity, I think that they could really challenge Adobe's dominance in the graphic design software space, especially when it comes to AI and for the 99% of people that don't have design training. Ultimately, the choice depends on individual preferences, workflow requirements, and budget considerations. But if you're looking for an excellent, cheaper alternative to just simply draw, then I would highly recommend Affinity Designer. Thank you for watching.